Hello and welcome back to the Movie Memo Recaps. Today we are going to recap a 2020 movie titled Unhinged, please be advised that there are spoilers ahead. Our story begins on a dark and stormy night, and we see a man sitting in his pickup truck, clearly distressed. He takes off his wedding ring, tosses it aside, lights a match, and grabs a gas canister and hammer. The people inside scramble to confront him as he bursts into the house, but he meets them with force. This guy's not messing around. He douses the place with gasoline and sets it ablaze. As he removes his truck, a massive explosion erupts from the house. Meanwhile, Rachel is snoozing on the couch when her lawyer, Andy, wakes her up. He informs her that her soon-to-be ex-husband is targeting her house, suggesting they file an objection. However, their conversation abruptly ends when Rachel's son, Kyle, enters, reminding her to get dressed to avoid being late. In the dining room, Kyle is spending time with his uncle Fred, who is talking to his elderly mother. The news on the TV reports the violent attack from earlier, revealing that the man was the woman's ex-husband with a history of substance abuse and violence. As Rachel searches for her candy cane scissors, Fred and his partner discuss their financial troubles, particularly the high cost of their mother's nursing home. Soon, it's time to leave, so Kyle and Rachel get into their old car and set off. Unfortunately, they find themselves stuck in traffic, and a disagreement arises about whether to take the freeway. Despite Kyle's objections, Rachel takes the freeway, risking being late. While driving, a call comes in from Rachel's husband, eager to talk to his father. Kyle answers the phone, only to be disappointed when his dad cancels their plans to go to a game. Rachel tries to comfort her son, hoping to ease his disappointment. However, their situation worsens as they find themselves caught in a traffic jam on the freeway. During the delay, Rachel receives another call, this time from a client. Unable to talk her way out of it, the client realizes that she'll be late once again, resulting in Rachel losing her job. To lift her spirits, Kyle gently teases his mother and suggests they take the next exit from the freeway to try the back streets instead. After leaving the freeway, they stop at a red light behind a gray pickup truck. When the pickup doesn't move after the light changes, Rachel honks and drives around it. At the following traffic light, the pickup pulls up alongside their car, revealing the man who set the house on fire earlier. He motions for them to roll down their windows. Kyle obliges and rolls down the window. Rachel and the man engage in an awkward exchange, with him patronizing her before offering an apology. He expects Rachel to apologize as well, but she stands her ground and snaps back, disagreeing with him. This angers the man who threatens her by saying she'll find out what a terrible day means. Clearly frightened, Kyle urges his mom to drive away. The man follows them, aggressively cutting them off twice. Rachel takes another route and finally manages to drop Kyle off at school, albeit quite late. She calls Andy, asking him to meet her for breakfast in 20 minutes and promises not to be late, even though she's running low on gas. Rachel stops at a gas station, sets the pump, and goes inside to grab a few items. As she goes to pay at the cashier, she spots the gray pickup parked right behind her car, stirring up an unsettling feeling. Concerned, Rachel informs the cashier and a man standing in line next to her that the man in the pickup has been following her after their argument. The kind stranger offers to walk her out, get the pickup driver's license plate number, and watch over her as she fuels her car. As Rachel drives off, the man provides her with the license plate number and stays behind to confront the pickup driver, telling him not to suddenly, the pickup driver violently turns, ramming the good Samaritan into the street, where another car hits him. The pickup continues to chase after Rachel. She tries to lose him as she drives, but they end up stuck in yet another traffic jam with the pickup right behind her. The man rams into her car repeatedly, but no one seems to react. When they resume their drive, Rachel finds herself unable to locate her phone to call for assistance. The pickup driver pulls up next to her, smirking as he shows her that he has her phone. In a panic, Rachel drives off, causing an accident and narrowly avoiding hitting a pedestrian. Believing she's finally lost him, she pulls into a parking lot to hide and catch her breath. The harrowing ordeal has frayed her nerves. While all this is happening, Andy waits for Rachel at a diner, calling her repeatedly but only reaching her voicemail. Unexpectedly, the man with the pickup walks in and heads straight for Andy. Pretending to be an old friend of Rachel's, he sits down and strikes up a conversation with Andy. They discuss frightening experiences with road rage and touch on Rachel's divorce. The man defends her soon-to-be ex-husband, making Andy increasingly uncomfortable. To keep up the facade, the man claims he can get Rachel on the phone, so Andy hands over his own phone for the man to try. Back in the parking lot, Rachel searches for her tablet when she suddenly hears a phone ringing. She finds a phone, picks it up, and answers, even though it's not her own. The man hands Andy his cell phone, 
and Andy tells her that he's waiting for her at the diner with an old friend named Tom Cooper. Confused, she says she doesn't know anyone by that name. As she starts talking about the man with a pickup, he takes the phone from Andy, revealing his presence. Rachel calls the man a psycho and explains what he's done. He insists that she must truly apologize to him in person. Andy senses that something is amiss and asks for his phone back. Suddenly, the man strikes Andy with a cup, breaking his nose. The people in the diner are alarmed, but no one intervenes as the man slams Andy's head on the table, knocking him out. The man puts Rachel on speakerphone and continues the conversation, questioning if Andy is really just her lawyer and friend or if she's cheating on her husband with him, just as his own wife had done. He instructs Rachel to say her final words to Andy before he starts punching him, which eventually escalates into a stabbing incident. The diner's bystanders continue to do nothing but film the horrific scene. As the man leaves the diner, he informs Rachel that Andy is dead. Desperate, she tries to plead with him and apologizes, but the man doesn't believe her sincerity and speeds away. The man calls Rachel again using her own phone and starts reciting all the messages she's received, including one from her son's school. He cruelly toys with her, asking her to choose who he should kill next from her contact list. When she refuses, he transfers all her money to her ex-husband and threatens to target her mother and burn her house down. In desperation, Rachel chooses herself, but he doesn't accept her choice and demands another name. She reluctantly provides the name of the client who fired her earlier. After hanging up, Rachel immediately contacts the police. The police rush to Rachel's former client's house, but they find no trace of the man. Meanwhile, back at Rachel's house, Fred watches the news report detailing the shocking events that transpired at the diner. Fred hears a strange noise coming from another room, and his wife doesn't respond to his calls. As he goes to check on her, he notices the pickup parked outside the house. The ominous noises continue, and Fred proceeds with a knife in hand. Suddenly, the man appears, holding Fred's battered wife and recounting what happened with Rachel. He admits to feeling insignificant, with violence and revenge being the only things he has left. The man then kills Fred's wife and sends Rachel a photo of him with her brother. Once again, the man calls Rachel, who informs him that she has already contacted the police. He's already aware of this and checks the tracker on her phone. He sees that she's in front of Kyle's school and gives her an ultimatum. She has three minutes to pick up her son and drive away, or he'll kill Fred. The man then coerces Fred into writing a letter in which he blames Rachel for his death, all the while dousing him in gasoline. In the meantime, Rachel quickly picks up her son from school, and as they drive away, she calls the man back. She tells him she is Kyle, and the man demands she puts him on speaker or he'll set her brother on fire. Reluctantly, Rachel complies. The man forces Fred to read the letter he wrote, stating that Rachel is responsible for everything that has happened and that he'll never see another sunrise again. Suddenly, a police officer enters the house, prompting the man to hide behind Fred. He sets Fred ablaze and tries to escape, but the officer manages to shoot him in the shoulder. Rachel hears everything unfold over the phone, and she stops the car, breaking down in tears. Kyle tries to comfort her when the phone rings again. It's the man informing her that Fred is dead and threatening Kyle's life. At her breaking point, Rachel fights back with her own threats and smashes the phone in defiance. Determined, she and Kyle get back in the car and head to the police station. As they make their way there, Rachel and Kyle realize the man might be tracking them using Rachel's tablet. Kyle discovers it taped beneath her seat and wants to throw it out the window, but Rachel comes up with the idea to track the man using the tablet instead. Kyle realizes the man is right in front of them, having stolen her neighbor's van. They spot a police car up ahead, and Rachel tells Kyle to buckle his seatbelt. She pulls up alongside the van, heading straight for the police car. Kyle tries to get the officer's attention, but the man figures out their plan and rams into the police car, causing a massive crash. He continues to follow Rachel and Kyle, relentlessly closing in on them. Kyle calls the police from the tablet, but they say they can't do anything to help. The tablet runs out of battery, leaving them on their own. Rachel decides to head to her mother's house, where the neighborhood's complexity might slow the man down a bit. She speeds up, and he follows, causing more car crashes along the way. Rachel manages to outsmart the man and lose him for a moment, just long enough to get to her mother's house and let Kyle inside. Once there, Kyle activates the panic button on the alarm, grabs a flashlight, and hides upstairs in a secret compartment. Meanwhile, the man drives around the neighborhood, searching for them. He spots their car and stops to take his meds and compose himself. Suddenly, Rachel rams into him with another car. She walks up to his vehicle, but he grabs her and pins her to the ground. He tells her she'll always remember him and what she could have done to save her boy. With Rachel down, the man goes after Kyle in the house, 
calling out for him and pretending to be the police. Kyle makes a noise, giving away his position, and Rachel appears in the hiding spot. The man also appears, sparking a fierce fight in which he relentlessly targets Kyle, while Rachel does everything within her power to protect her son. The man eventually knocks Rachel over and starts strangling her son. Desperate, she finds her candy cane scissors and stabs him, finally killing him. The police arrive at the house soon after. The police officer who found Fred approaches Rachel and Kyle, informing them that Fred is still alive. Relieved, they drive to the hospital to see him, making sure not to anger anyone else on their way there. Thank you for watching, if you're new don't forget to subscribe for more recaps, until next time, have a nice day.